I got a lot. I got a bunch of new. I got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, it keeps happening. Get off your chest. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Right. Uh, I don't know. It's like uh, it's a lot of folding phones again. Somehow. Mm-hmm. That's still the the hot thing mm-hmm. in smartphones. It's the next stage of smartphones, whether you like it or not, Will. Hmm. Ten years from now, you're folding your phone whether you like it or not. Yes or no? Probably. Also tablets, too. You're folding everything? Yeah. Laptop. Well, they're always folding. You're still folding it. So, uh, anyhow, we got a bunch of new information emerging in relationship to Motorola's folding device. We talked about it many times on this show. Uh, there's now, you know, the usual leaker, Evan Blass, he put out images of the actual device ahead of the event. Now, invites have gone out for the event. This phone is coming soon, very soon. It's, it's, what's the word? It's coming, it's coming really soon. It's upcoming. That's a good one. Imminent. The Motorola Razr version 2019 is imminent. Can I bring the volume down? No, you can't. It's like Star Trek or something. Captain Picard. It's like a mission. Yeah, I'm Picard right now. So it's imminent. It's like a collision is imminent. If they're floating in that. Uh, Starship Enterprise mm-hmm. They're going through Warp speed Yeah, collision is imminent Yeah, They let you know I guess it was kind of the same with the Titanic With the iceberg With the iceberg mm-hmm. You see, the thing about an iceberg, Will You only see a small portion of it above the water Yes Right, it's a, it's a small little uh, Warning the real trouble trouble lies beneath the surface, Will. It's what you can't see. Uh-huh. There's only a small portion exposed. Anyhow, this phone is imminent. And uh, they're bringing back the Razer name. If you look at the, the various leaks here, courtesy Evan Blass, he also puts out the potential new logo and all kinds of different folded looks and photographs of the upcoming phone we have full exposure now at this point it looks a lot like a lot like the original razor Mm -hmm. it's black so that's a bit different but when it's folded up in the clamshell format the form factor is essentially the same maybe a bit fatter uh, than that original clamshell device of course the magic trick when you open it up you get the the large smartphone display inside of the device. Now, again, if you examine these images, it appears you can fully operate the phone from the outside display. One of the images showcases a response to a text message, and you just landed on that image. As I said it, Will, hmm. you can see that's a female hand right there. And she is responding to Ali Connor, and the it's or Ali Connor is texting her at 7:04 p.m. And she's about to interact with it. And Ali Connor says, "Dinner tonight?" Question mm-hmm. mark. Do you, what do you respond? If it's you, um, Will. Yeah, sure. Well, it depends, though. Easy there. It depends. Easy. If it's take uh, your time, Will. If it's like, uh, well, what restaurant? Or is it dine in? Maybe you, you can know? suggest a restaurant. Yeah, Chipotle. Kirk, Kirk went to Chipotle last night, so I would say Chipotle. Plus, Chipotle scored high on the food grade <clears throat> results from that recent yeah investigation. It has the least amount of antibiotics in the beef. Yes, so in the beef. you're going to Chipotle, but they had their issues too. You remember there was that fiasco? People, somebody got Salmonella. sick, and you know, they had to pull all the stuff off the Chipotle. Yeah. Anyway, so. 
Note the Verizon logos on the carrier details. Maybe it's probably going to be Verizon, Verizon, Motorola in bed together, as we're all well aware. The whole thing looks very exciting. It's a, to me, a compelling, a compelling argument for the folding tech in the first place here, because now you get the, the nice little tiny package for the pocket. Mm -hmm. Some people can be into that, Will. And whereas with the Galaxy Fold, it's a pocket commitment. It's a bit heavy. It's big. Mm -hmm. Sure, when it's unfolded, it's a much bigger display. But is it bigger than people need? I don't know. I can't say for certain. But this one, on the other hand, it's got a sleek factor to it, like the original Razer. You remember everybody wanted that Razer, Will? Oh, yeah. It you wanted a, it. It was a really hip phone. Yeah, you wanted it. Did you have one? No, I didn't. What did you have instead in that era? Nokia something? I got a really small Samsung flip phone. You had a it was Samsung. like super tiny. Oh. And it was, it, was, it was decent. You were flipping. But it wasn't as cool as a razor. You were flipping open, flipping closed. Yeah. I was like, this is my razor. Yeah. And it's What did you do with that phone? You call, call your friends and whatnot? Yeah. And text with T9. Did you? That was, uh, that was I thought you were going to say text with Tina. It's like, how do you expect me to know who <laughs> Tina is? It's like, I don't know who Tina is. Well, I did know a Tina. Yeah. I so, did text her. So T9. And you're making plans. How'd that go for you? Um, it was slow, but it did the job. I mean, we we wouldn't have thought of texting as like a, a big deal with T9. So you're texting and then you actually meet up with these humans in real life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Normal, right? You do, you're back doing in, activities uh, together? What are you doing? Back in 2005. You're doing activities? Um, yeah. I think uh, the bus terminal was a cool thing. That's a hangout. Yeah. Wow. In Mississauga, it was like a big thing. It's like, oh, let's let's hang out at the bus terminal. Wow. I mean, the mall was right there, but everyone would meet up at the bus terminal. And it would be like, what kind of numbers are we thing. talking here? Ah, uh, range from like three to like ten. It was a it was a party when it was ten. Yeah, Willie do square one. Willie do square one times, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to whoever was there. Yeah, shout out. Shout out to whoever was meeting up with you on a T9 text. Mm -hmm. They know who they it are. good times. Shout out, Tina. Anyhow, so this device is coming out really soon. What a start to today's show. Wow, it's like a Willie do history lesson. Ugh. Unintended. Exciting times being Willie do. Yeah. Young Willie do at square one. Uh, so we got to look at it. We can see the the device. It's being unveiled November 13th. I think I forwarded you the email. I want, I'm i hoping they can just send us one because I can't go to this event. Yeah, I know. So I'm working on it. Will's working on it, whatever that means. Yeah. Probably T9 texting them. Yeah. He's probably like, I'll meet you at square one. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what? And they're like, what's square one? We're Motorola. What's, <laughs> what's what you, square one? Yeah, what are you talking about? Are you, are you hanging out with your friends? You're I was like, yeah, you're, you're a 34 year old man. You're my friend, right? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, times uh, times have gone by. It's, it's gone Motorola. past you here, Will. Uh, as noted in another leak, the outer display is limited in functionality, but it's clear from the image that one of the functions it will serve is displaying notifications. So a lot like the Samsung device, where the exterior display is kind of doing your uh, minor interactions, it's capable of it. Well, in the Samsung case, you can do everything on that screen, but you right. really wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's almost like Motorola has done a dedicated UI for the external display to, to, to enhance those limited functions instead of trying to have everything show up on the ex exterior display. So that might be a good move. Time will tell. Now, the thing is, you know Samsung, Will. You ever heard of Samsung? Uh, yes. Yeah, they don't. I think so. They're they're in the game heavy. Like they don't just let things happen and not respond or react. When there's a punch, they counter punch, like a boxing match. Sometimes Hail Marys too. Sometimes Hail Marys. You know. Do you know what sport that that term gets used in? NFL. Easy there. Yelling and, and boxing too. Right? Shouting. Or Shouting. Okay, explain a Hail Mary in football to us. Well, I think it's when uh, 
you know, the team is down on their luck. And they gotta throw the ball really, really far, <laughs> and just hope that. Uh, yeah, you're pretty much can't... right. Last down, yeah. clock running out. Yeah, it's your final play. It's your last chance. It's your last hope. It's your hail mary. You play NFL blitz? Yeah, of course. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah a lot of, of hail marys there. Yeah, of course. So anyhow, Samsung throwing their very own counter punch to this Motorola device. They can't be left on the sideline. See that card. They can't be left on the sideline. And instead, they got their very own clamshell situation happening, much like the Motorola product. And now it has a name, W25G, and it has a release. So we saw a leaked image, a vague image, that we showcased on the last episode of this show, where at the developer conference, it seemed like, okay, maybe this is in the future in conjunction with the current Galaxy Fold, but now it appears it's a lot closer than originally expected. So it will be dubbed the Galaxy W20 5G, of course, indicating the 5G support, and China Mobile confirmed the Galaxy W20 5G foldable flip phone launch will happen next month for China Mobile. Next month. Whoa. Although we just changed months. Uh, today right so, so this story is from uh so october 31st this month it's gonna be do we have to are we ed or do we have to mod the headline this month i presume they mean this month that's the problem you write something on the 31st of october mm -hmm. i presume they mean this month and of course we have our very own images even a gif and a video clip from the event it looks a lot like what Motorola is doing. And if Motorola is set to launch theirs on the 12th, was it the 12th, the 13th of November, this one might be closer than you think mm. to meeting the exact same timeline, in which case Samsung could achieve the thing they're probably looking for, which is some comparison shopping. You've decided you want the clamshell style folding phone and you see the Motorola and then immediately you must now consider the Samsung version of it mm -hmm. because of the timing. You see how they did that with the timing, Will? Mm -hmm. Timing is a lot for phone releases. It's huge. You think? Oh, it's huge. And you know all the internal meetings, they, they, they get the leaked intel. Motorola is almost ready. Mm -hmm. Hop in the boardroom. Overtime. And they start expediting the process of their own version and they and they put the deadline in the well what, what do they use i don't know google docs or no they got something much more they got office 365 they have a billboard or is it 360 i don't know man they got productivity apps yes they got whatever it is the hot productivity apps and they put the deadline in there and everybody goes to work we were talking about this yesterday mm -hmm. you buy a new phone will you just bought the work of five ten thousand twenty thousand people that's what you bought mm -hmm. you can buy a phone yeah you sent those people back to work for another year mm -hmm. you're keeping this thing rolling will yes it's not just the physical device. You're keeping this thing alive, it's Will. The design, the concepts, all those manpowers. I'm saying you're stimulating the economy, Will. Yes. We I'm are. saying you're yes. a stimulating we guy out there. Kirk liked that one. I'm saying you get out there and you vote with your dollar. Exactly. You put those people back to work. It's very exciting. So which one are you going for? The Samsung or the Motorola? If it looks like this, the Samsung concept, which will probably not be, mm -hmm. I mean, this the Samsung phone looks amazing. You're going for the Samsung. It looks way cleaner. Well, because but it is a concept. It's like a render. It's a render <laughs> right I'll now. But that. but what you do know, considering they showed it off at the developer conference, what you do know is there's a commitment to bring a custom version of One UI, One UI two, and as you can see the animation there, yes. you know they've considered the the smoothness of the experience from a software perspective yes we don't know what motorola is going to do no but it would be a chance to get another or the first motorola razor right 
there's some nostalgia at play. Exactly, yeah. And that's a strong force. It's like you at the bus stop. Yeah. There's the nostalgia at play. I'll just be at the terminal flashing the new Razor. Dude. People can text me now. That's right. You know, no T9. Google buys Fitbit for $2.1 billion. Couple of bucks. What do you wow. think? Is that, is that a good deal or what? <laughs> I, I guess for Fitbit, yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Could change. Yeah, the fitness knows. tracking company joins Google kind of, uh, kind of like how Nest joined Google. They were acquired. I don't remember what the dollar figure was there. Probably in a similar territory. Uh, it will still operate as Fitbit within Google. Google apparently will utilize this acquisition to further its Wear OS and its wearables in general. We talked about this on the last episode as well. This is an update because it was just speculation. There was an offer. There was talk that an acquisition was imminent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Picard. I don't know. He's Data. <laughs> he's Date. Is that what his name? Data. Yeah. 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 He's Data, man. Cap that's the old, that's the only two guys I know. Captain Kirk. No, that's it. That's oh, that's, that's another rude. generation. That's I know, rude. but no, you gotta be the other uh, dude. No, no, no. You gotta be the other dude with the visor. Jordan. Yeah, cause they look at look at you right now. Yeah. Anyhow, so they buy Fitbit because they need to get this Wear OS thing going. Uh, they're sitting there looking at what's happening with Apple, looking at what's happening with the Apple Watch. They don't really have a play. And you know Google increasingly investing in hardware with the Pixel product. They're putting the commercials on TV. They're trying to flip users, bring them over with the fancy marketing and the shapes moving around and the primary colors as you would if you were Google. Mm -hmm. So now that they, they, they come to this realization, I presume internally that the real killer functionality for the wearable is actually fitness more than anything else. And I agree with them, by the way. All these other things the watch does, your phone does better, except for fitness. Fitness, there's no argument. You got the heart rate, you got the activity tracking, you can have it on you during an, a multitude of activities where having your phone might not be great. The notifications on the wrist, I got enough of that already. But the fitness and the sleep tracking and the health, that's the functionality. And so with a brand like Fitbit, which has positioned itself even in the brand name with the Fit component, I think this is a good acquisition for Google. Not to mention all the data that Google is going to get from Fitbit, right? Yeah, Fitbit had to actually make a statement. Your stuff is still cool. We're very private. Because a lot of people probably had the same assumption you just did, which was Google's a big, data company. Big data. Big data. Yeah. Is it data or data? Which one are you? I call data. All right. I like that. Your data? I like that. I'm data. Google has announced that it's buying wearable company <laughs> Fitbit for $2.1 billion in a blog post, Google SVP of Devices. And services, Rick Osterloh, he, he jumps on stage for the Pixel events. He shows you around. He tells you what they're working on. That's him. Uh, he said, Fit, the Fitbit purchase is an opportunity to invest even more in Wear OS. So he had to say that because that means, look, we're not giving up on Wear OS. If you're sitting out there with a Wear OS device or you're developing so software for Wear OS, we're not. it's not over yet. He's saying even more in Wear OS, as well as introduce, introducing made-by-Google wearable devices into the market. So these Fitbit devices are now going to have some sort of made-by-Google badge like the Nest products do, and presumably will maybe even better software integration with Android devices. Hmm. You could imagine. Mm -hmm. Maybe it can open up certain pathways that weren't otherwise easily accessible. And that's one area that Apple does very well. We talked about it many times. The ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You pop open the watch. 
it's a very magical experience connecting to your phone and connecting all your stuff. So maybe Fitbit now, you can have a similar type of experience with Android. I think Fitbit has a recognizable brand name. They were early players in the space. I think people feel relatively fondly about it. They got their own social thing happening. They have a variety of products, not just trackers. They have a scale. I have that scale at home, actually. Hmm. The Fitbit Aria smart scale, which is pretty cool. It all interacts with the app. It's, it's, I think it's pretty exciting. I don't know the 2.1 billion. Prior to the acquisition, the stock was surging, Fitbit stock. So Wall Street seems to be into it. They like it. And now we're probably going to see some Wear OS component inside of, the, inside of your Fitbit. What do you think, Will? Right on. All right. Do I trust Google? Do, you, do I have a choice? Do we have a choice? Yeah. Kirk says, by the way, don't yell and scream, okay? You're saying, well, where's Kirk's microphone? I, well, Kirk's he doing a... He's doing a pitch for a microphone right now, this episode. Hmm. Ever since he got the title with the visor in Star Trek, he's fighting for a mic. So Will, Will's going to think about it, but Will's been against it up until this point. But anyway, Kirk's over there shouting whether or not I trust Google with my data. Yeah, we just found Kirk right now. There he is. Yeah, LaForge, baby. We can get you one of those visors. Anyway, Kirk asked me if I would trust Google with all this data. Dude, my health data is far more tantalizing than all the stuff Google already has with all the various activity and mail and everything else. Uh, health is not the, the, the piece that's going to throw it off. If you're already trusting them with your email, which most people are, or at least a lot of people are, I think the health switch or knob is actually an easy one to push and we're increasingly in this universe in which it's it would be you'd have to extract yourself pretty severely to get away from the google data machine imagine you tried to somebody i think it was a new york times reporter maybe wired tried to get away from all the big tech companies and say live a month without uh, google apple facebook maybe there was one other amazon i can't remember and it was treacherous this individual barely made it out alive. That might, I might be exaggerating, but it was a rough time nonetheless. So Huawei's upcoming Android tablet is an iPad Pro with a hole punch display. So uh, Huawei, we haven't talked about them in a little bit. They're still kicking. They're still doing it. You're not going to shut them down. Well, no, you're not going to shut them down. I never knew they had a tablet before. They've had tablets. They call they them did. the... Mate Pad. This one is the Mate Pad Pro. Tell me, does that look anything like an iPad Pro? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell the truth. Well, yeah, it does. Okay, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'll tell you what's weird about the iPad Pro as a product. It's a rectangle. Yeah, you can't really change <laughs> much of the design there. It's a rectangle. Uh... Once these things are all rectangular screens, what's what do we have left over to 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 nitpick? I don't know. But when you see the keyboard case and the pen alongside, and you look at the chosen wallpaper in the in the yes. in the image, then the iPad ness starts to seep out even more. So it is pictured here with a keyboard case attachment, super reminiscent of Apple's version. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does, however, have a front-facing camera in a hole-punch fashion, which seems a bit odd. You would think you have enough room to play with on a device this size in the bezel, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But they decided to go with a hole-punch up in the corner. The screen is big enough. I don't think it's really going to bother anyone, but it's there nonetheless. They've, they, I don't even, with the exception of Face ID or Face Unlock, I guess people video conference on these things. Anyhow, it's it looks like a Samsung style hole punch, like the Galaxy right. products. Uh, this is also from Evan Blass, by the way. He is the leaker for this image, same leaker for the Motorola stuff. So he's leaking all kinds of stuff out there. A couple different images 
a couple different devices leaked in the images, a white version as well as a black version. You also get a better look at the actual uh, pen input. Rumor site 91 Mobiles has spotted renders of a new Huawei tablet. Could sit at the high end of Huawei's mid-range, mid-screen range. And I don't know what happens to the OS. I presume we're talking pretty Android-ish. It's, it's going to be Android on there. But, of course, we're living in this landscape of various restrictions. Yeah. Could this be a place where they could play a little bit more with their custom OS? Maybe. Maybe in certain ways. The device is pictured with Huawei's professional-looking keyboard attachment as well as a stylus, and it's going to include a USB-C port and bottom-firing speakers. There will be a silo for the stylus and a 3.5-inch headphone jack. Apparently, that's just rumors at the moment. I mean, you can see the speakers and the Type-C port. I don't, however, in these images, see the headphone jack, so that's definitely spe speculation. Though, on a big device, you should be able to fit it. Granted, Apple didn't. Or did Apple? Does the iPad Pro have a headphone jack? Remind me right now. Real-time fact-checking investigation, investigative reporting. I don't remember. I mean, I've used the device. It doesn't. No, you need a dongle. You need a dongle. You're in the dongle town. Well, they want to sell you all the AirPods anyways, Will. They got to sell you a bunch of AirPods. AirPods, AirPods 2, AirPods Pro. Mm -hmm. So you're not using a headphone jack if you have that device. <laughs> Remember we were talking about Tesla in the past? Yes. Tesla a couple of times. Tesla and Porsche. They're going head to head right now. I can. And you know, the thing about it is, uh, Tesla's been at the top for so long, Will. Just occupying that top spot, acceleration, electric, motor, greatness. And so when this when this Taycan stuff started happening, Elon, he just started talking on Twitter. Mm. He started saying, wait till you see what I'm going to do. Every time you heard something about the Taycan, you had Elon mm. right there. Yeah, I got the next one. Coming a, right up. He's a keyboard warrior. Yeah, he's, it's obviously got his attention. Yes. And in a weird way, you know, I've been on the internet, Will. Have you? I've been on the internet. And in a weird way, when you look at this type of thing, when you look at something like this, you ask yourself, what is the real information? Where does it live inside of these type of articles? What's really happening? Is Elon, through talking about it and referencing the various findings and, 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 and track times and is he doing more harm than good by showcasing the fact that it's on his radar? He's a big, he's a big deal, Elon. Mm -hmm. 29 million followers, 92, I don't know, a couple of followers. Yes. Is he bringing more attention to this Taycan just by, by... The very fact of just... Discussing saying I'm gonna beat that time in the conversation. Keep an eye. Now I get it. If I made something like that, Will, and I pour my heart and soul into it, I'm gonna back it up. I'm gonna go down fighting. Yes. But you gotta ask yourself that question sometimes. Is what am I really doing by venting right now? Am I drawing more am I drawing attention to the fact that this is bothering me? But is being bothered such a bad thing anyways? Probably not, because it's good, comp healthy competition, as we've mentioned in the past. Anyhow, he came out and said, look, we're going to increase the peak power of the current highest-end version, P100, the Raven, the fastest Model S. We're going to increase peak power by 50 horsepower through software. And this is coming on the heels of some vehicle testing Taycan Turbo S versus Model S performance in which the numbers favored the Taycan. And of course, Tesla Twitter, Tesla YouTube flipped out. Say, you didn't do this right. Suspicious numbers. Hmm. As, as the communities of the internet do, because I've been on the internet. 
Yes. And so have you. Yeah. You've seen this stuff play out. Shouting, yelling. I mean, for us, it's mostly Apple, Samsung, Google, shouting, yelling. It's all the same thing. It's just people. They're in the camps. Being uh, loud. You get in the camp. Mm -hmm. You get in the camp, you defend the camp. On the internet. Make a lot of noise. Anyway, people love their things. People love Tesla. So be it. Elon set out, he said on Rogan's podcast, he set out to create a product that people would love. Set out to create a product. I think he said the most fun product. He thinks it's the most fun product you can buy. Something like that, he said mm -hmm. on the podcast. And so if people love it that much, they want to defend it, cool. You know me, though, Will. I'm here saying I cheer for competition. In general, that's I applaud it. You did something great. You did something great. I'm not. I'm not getting on here. I'm not getting on here, uh, jumping in a camp. That's limiting for me and what I want to, how I want to, yeah. interact with the product universe. Yes, competition. The consumer wins. I want to travel. You know what yes. I want to do, Will? I want to walk up and down the street. I want to try all the restaurants. Why not? Yeah, I want to peek into your camp. What you got cooking? Will you have me over for dinner? I don't know about that. But. Yeah, that would be a bad idea. But I want it, that's what I want to do, Will. Yeah. I want to see what the world has to offer. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Great, um, uh, uh, amazing engineers working on amazing things. But anyhow, th this uh, skepticism, suspiciousness over here in relationship to Top Gear's testing appears to be legit. I watched a video about it. Apparently, these numbers were pulled from some optimal scenario and then regurgitated for the purpose of the test. And, and apparently, it's very unlikely that these numbers were, were the ones that were actually derived from the testing that was shown on video. So there's all kinds of conspiracies floating, flying. Uh, I can't speak to it for certain, but in order to squash it completely, Elon comes, up, comes out and says, okay, fine. Even if you want to look at that the way it is, we're going to increase the horsepower. Here's his tweet. Drag race times analysis is correct. Also, there's a software upgrade for Model S coming out that increases peak power by 50 horsepower. So Model S should beat Taycan Turbo S by wider margin in 0 to 60 and quarter mile races. You know, one thing I like, Will, about Elon, even though he's doing the thing potentially that I'm saying, if he keeps referencing every Taycan test that comes out, even though he's doing the thing of showcasing the fact that he, it's affecting him, he comes out, he just spits the facts. Yeah, it's, uh, re That thing reads in the least amount of words possible to describe the thing. Drag Race Times analysis is correct. Also, there's a software upgrade for Model S coming out that increases peak power by 50 horsepower. Model S should be Porsche Taycan Turbo S by a wider margin in 0 to 60 in quarter mile races. Good night. Yeah, it's very Godspeed. binary. It's you know like, what I mean? Uh, yeah, we're just going to turn this on. Even though That's it's it. getting to, even though there's a personal aspect because he's the guy making the car, he depersonalizes the message. Yeah. So he's good at that. Shout out Elon. Anyhow, so the whole ruckus is, uh, the whole ruckus came about because of what was a, uh, it was, who did the testing? Top Gear. Because of Top Top Gear. And they did the 0 to 60, 0 to 100, and quarter mile times for a Taycan Turbo S and a Model S performance. And the Taycan Turbo S beat the Model S performance. It both crazy fast, by the way. We're arguing over decimal points here for ridiculously fast cars. But nonetheless, that's what spurred the whole thing. And if you want to dive into the conspiracy, you can yourself in order to determine where you land on it, whether you think it's real or not. But I don't know how much it matters because it looks like Elon is in the game. He, it looks like he's in it to win it. So he's probably going to juice some version of the Model S to beat that thing no matter what. He's that invested. That's my feeling. Right. The, the, the one right now is Raven. He's going to put out uh, Falcon. Maybe he already did the that. The Millennium Falcon. Maybe he already did that. So but you know, speed. A, a, a Falcon is... The fastest bird. Is it? Can we get a falcon speed real quick? Can we get a falcon speed real quick? 
I mean, it's, I think it's the fastest animal anyway. But I just said bird in order because he had the raven. Maybe he's saving the, the falcon. Peregrine falcon. Yeah. Uh, 200 miles an hour, 320 kilometers an hour. Yeah, Google really got us on that. That's definitely not a peregrine falcon in that image right there. But yeah, that's a fast bird. So maybe he's got the falcon version or maybe the Tesla people are going to tell me. I already screwed this up because he had some falcon and then you can't go back to the falcon. You know what? Maybe you just call it the peregrine falcon. So you're even more specific, Porsche. There you go. You don't want to mess with the peregrine falcon. Are we talking speed? Are we talking speed? Well, make me bring my falcon. You ever seen those guys, Will? They put the they got the blindfold on the falcon. They got the arm. Uh -huh. They pull the blindfold. Mm. You saw that. What did they use it for again? Did he? I think that's just the Is art it itself. Just yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. falconry. But maybe it's for hunting as well. Probably originally. A lot of things started like that. Falconry. Yeah, look at this. That's a beautiful bird. I see these. I see these from time to time. Maybe not this exact type of falcon, but I see them falcons and hawks in the wilderness because I'm out there. And, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. I see I mean, sometimes. And, oh, oh, you know one thing I will say. I'm just gonna, I'm going to sidetrack for a minute. Go ahead. Uh, you ever see the small bird chasing the big bird? Yeah, what? Yeah. You see? No one looks into it. Let's look into it right now. That's the beauty of live television. Why is the small bird, why does the big bird uh, try to <laughs> escape the, the small bird? Why is he scared of the small bird? Everybody has seen this happen. Hang on. Everybody has seen this happen. It's not a YouTube. You got to Google. <laughs> Big Bird? <laughs> no, not Big Bird. Not Sesame Street. Big Bird. No. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Scroll down. You had it, Will. What's going on when I see little birds going after a Big Bird? You witness a behavior called mobbing. Smaller birds swoop and dash at flying or perch larger birds and mammals in an effort to drive away potential predators from breeding territory, a nest or young, not non-breeding. Yeah, so I see this happen all the time. It's all these red -winged black -winged yes, and it works. It's effective. I don't, the thing I don't understand is why the big bird listens to the small bird. Why he just, what's it going to do to him? If you're a hawk and you're just chilling on the, on the branch and, and, a, and a little, little red-winged blackbird comes up to you, you don't, maybe you don't know your, I don't know. Why are you running? Yeah, it's a mystery. You well, know, we got the biology not, people, they're yelling at us now. We had the Tesla people yelling at us. Elon's yelling at us. Porsche yelling at us. Samsung, Apple. Now we got the biology, biology people yelling at us. They're yelling, of course, it's mobbing. You've witnessed mobbing. Big deal. Oh, anyway, I'm sure you've seen this before. And look what we just did. Now you can tell people. Yeah, that's just mobbing up there. <laughs> yeah. Surprised you didn't know. Uh, Tim Cook, he says, AirPods Pro are complementary to AirPods, not replacements. So you got to get two. You got to get both. <laughs> there you go. Complementary. You got to own both. What a thing to say. AirPods Pro made their way to consumers and Apple stores today. Ours showed up, so go, go shoot that upstairs. Got them right over there. Uh, they've got noise cancellation and transparency mode and all these extra features, and they cost a few more bucks. Earlier, we were talking about Google's acquisition of Fitbit. Here's a number for you, Will. Apple's wearables, home, and accessories category, $6.5 billion in revenue. All of a sudden, that $2.1 billion for Fitbit seems small. Mm -hmm. Next to that number right there, they're moving some Apple Watches after all, as well as whatever it, the accessories portion. Maybe it's all dongles. <laughs> Maybe it's it's uh, 500 million in Apple Watches and 6 billion in dongles. Okay, that's rude. I apologize. I'm just, I'm just having, uh, you know, you everybody, you got some dongles. You got two dongles connected right now. Oh, yeah. How much of those those two dongles you have? What do they run? 
100 bucks Canadian. No way. Yeah. Oh, Each yeah. one. Yes. And you have two. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You spent more on dongles than Apple Watches. Oh, yeah. So it's totally possible. We get the people to weigh in. So here's what Tim says. AirPods just keep hitting new highs, and I anticipate that will carry over to this quarter, too. And we're really proud to add another product out there for people wanting noise canceling with the AirPod Pro beginning to sell today. We're anxious to see the, con see the customers for the new AirPod Pro, but I would guess that one, particularly in the early going, will be people that have AirPods today and want to also have a pair for the times they need noise cancellation. He says it in such a gentle way. Mm. He says, when, when he says, I would guess that one, custom, one particular customer would be the type that has AirPods today and also wants to have a pair for the time they need noise cancellation. Yes. Basically saying, like, one is better than two. Just get two. Totally fine. Yeah, it's okay. It's Don't like feel no guilty. Yeah. Because Tim sees you. Yeah. Tim's like, it's okay. You can have both. It's incredible. You got money in the bank account. You can have both. Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, Apple is... This has this is a big piece of that 6.5 million or billion. I guarantee it. Cuz you see these things out in public everywhere. Not the pros yet, but the regular AirPods. And I don't know if Apple breaks down the actual segments individually from AirPod. I don't think they do. AirPods versus watches versus the other categories. They just kind of lump it together. But I honestly think the AirPod is one of Apple's greatest achievements as weird as that is to say it's not like i'm a huge fan of it but i just think it changed the idea of a headphone in a big way and others followed suit and it's had a mega impact on the headphone industry mm -hmm. and now of course they're they're reinvested here in the form of the pro version of the airpod and tim says you're allowed to have both now do i think that's practical for most people absolutely not that's a lot of money in AirPods. You're talking about 200 plus 250, possibly $500 in AirPods. Practically, yeah, that's tough. That's a tough one. I don't think he's wrong. I think a lot of people that love their AirPods will upgrade, but then they're probably just going to take their regular AirPods and put them to the side for the most part. They're not going to find these occasions to use both. They're going to use the superior one permanently, mm -hmm. probably. Uh, and definitely, if you're a person going out and buying your first pair, you're gonna you're definitely not buying both. You'll select whichever is better for you. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the ratio of the pro versus non-pro version, because obviously, this is a bigger form factor. Yes, it has extra features, but a lot of people, I think, were buying the original AirPods for the convenience factor, primarily, and not the sound quality, primarily. So we'll see how that maps out. Certainly people who watch this show, tech fans and so forth, will probably gravitate towards the Pro model. But I think Apple's still going to sell a ton of the other model. And I think that's really what Tim is saying. Mm -hmm. He's saying, look, both these products are going to coexist and we intend on selling a lot of each. Right. That's the other version of uh, the other interpretation of that statement. But sure enough, Tim, be happy you buy both. Mm -hmm. Apple Card users can now finance iPhone purchases for 24 months interest free. Uh, the way the way people used to buy smartphones through carriers would often allow them to pay off their phone later or in a distributed fashion over the course of a contract. A lot of people not buying their phones that way anymore and many carriers not even enabling it or supporting it in the same way they used to with those really aggressive subsidies. Mm -hmm. And Tim, in previous earnings calls, has referenced that status as potentially a detriment to their overall numbers, revenue, sales, volume, and so forth. And so one of the covert operations potentially of this Apple card is this baked-in financing to make the sting of a new iPhone a little more dull. 24 months. That seems like a long time to pay off 500 bucks, 600 bucks, 700 bucks, 1,000 bucks. Well, two years. Pay 1,000 bucks? Mm -hmm. What are you paying per month? What is it a month? You're the math guy, remember? 
Yeah, you you lost the role of data. I don't I don't want to say anything ridiculous because uh, you lost the role of data now. Yeah. So we need Kirk I'm to do it. Data. He's busting open his calculator. Twenty four months divided by a thousand. No, because you're probably gonna get the pro version. Aren't Probably you? a lot more. Aren't Probably you? Thirteen hundred. Yeah. yeah, it's like fifty bucks a month for the top top of the line. La I, I, oh, I, you don't like it. Will doesn't like no, it. No, I just remember a statement from Tim Cook in one of his presentations saying like, "You can own an iPhone for two dollars a day." There you go. And in many ways, that doesn't sound too bad. Right. Right. It's weird. It makes you feel good. Like oh, you it's just bucks, reconfigure can, it. It's less than a coffee. Less you than know? a coffee. Kirk spent no Kirk coffee budgets out of control. Well, he's buying coffee for you. He's yeah, that's why. <laughs> he's going broke. Exactly. He's going broke over here. He doubled it up. You know how many iPhones Kirk could have if I stopped drinking coffee? It's true. Uh, now many are speculating that this is the first step towards an Apple Prime subscription, mm. similar to Amazon Prime, in which you will have this constant upgrade cycle happening with your phone you'll give in your other one it's get some certain privileged status in relationship to these types of upgrades now this financing is not the end of the promotion when it comes to using the apple card to buy the iphone you also get the three percent cash back so apple they want they, they want it all mm. they want they want every they want you hooked up on every level. Finance, Prime. You know they're launching the their news or their Apple TV Plus. They had the news plus. They got the music. Apple Arcade. They got the arcade. You why don't you just do Apple Prime? You get the new phone all the time. You get all the services. The just bundles. Give, yeah, you just give us a million bucks a year. You'll be all set. Makes sense. And yeah, Perfect. Many phones as you want. No, but it's it's a real thing they're experimenting with, and I think they're going to continue down that path because I think, in this case, Tim is right. That's a major barrier for a lot of buyers seeing that $1,000-plus price tag, and you just shift that focus a little bit, and all of a sudden, people start thinking, I can pay for yeah. that two bucks a day. Come on. I got two bucks a day. So anyhow, new way to buy an iPhone. Uh, did you know, or oh, Will, I, this one, I'm excited I'm excited about this one because I get to use a word. I get to I get to kill you with this word. You ever heard of a splinter net? Yeah. How do you spell it? Splinter net. Splinter net. Internet splinter net. Okay. Go on. Can I guess what it is? Yeah, tell us what, what a splinter net is. It's kind of like the internet. But kind of like an offshoot of an internet, a little different. Go on. I'm thinking privacy is involved. <laughs> okay, whatever. Give up. <laughs> okay, so apparently Russia is about to disconnect from the internet. How wild is that? They're going, they're going private. A splinter net is a term used to reference this type of behavior in which the external internet connections are closed in order to create a splintered version of the internet. Right. Splinter net. Right. And, of course, the famous one is the, the Chinese firewall yes. that exists. This one, apparently, the speculation here, cool article, by the way, PC Mag. The speculation here is that it's not going to be as severe as the Great Firewall, but it's going to be in the same kind of same kind of uh, target zone. the The pitch is, hey, this we're doing this to avoid being the target of cyber attacks. Uh -huh. We're doing this to protect the domestic internet. Why are you making that face? What? I was right. Why are you making that face, Will? <laughs> I'm just saying. I was right. Security? Yeah, privacy. Privacy? Yeah. An offshoot of the internet. I don't know if it's you know privacy. I don't know if they're saying privacy, though. Because well, they're going to know everything. Well, maybe. From other countries. From other countries. 
privacy from other countries. They use the word sovereignty. Yes. You ever use that word before, Will? No. No. That's it's a big, too political. It's, it's very, too, uh, it's a hugely political word. Yeah. Sovereignty. It is an interesting discussion. Nonetheless, the idea of nations having their political sovereignty, but not so much from an internet or an informational perspective. Information flows. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly if you're used to the North American internet, information flows rapidly across those political boundaries. Mm -hmm. There is very little internet sovereignty. Right. Of course, China being the exception to that. Russia seemingly wanting to go down that, down that path. Uh, the details are kind of kind of wild. The way this might work, for example, is if a citizen hopes to visit Facebook, they might be redirected to a Russian social network instead, like VK. Now, I believe this, this, this stuff might happen in China as well. Every time, I, when, I, when I went to China, I'm using a, a VPN. Yes. Or in the hotel we're staying in, it's, our, it's opened up because there's so many foreigners in the hotel. Mm -hmm. So I never experienced the firewall version of the internet while in China. Yes. People can people can inform us. Of course we have Chinese viewers. I guess they watch through this show through a VPN so they can tell us how that all works if they try to go to YouTube via the firewall, the great firewall. What happens? Where do you go? End up with the Chinese government website. Oh, maybe. <laughs> you know? Or or if they were smart, they just send you to another video service. Yeah. Similar to what this suggestion is here. So anyhow, the initial proposition of the idea is is informational internet sovereignty from other countries, the ability to protect your nation from a cyber attack from an outside force, the ability to shut down the internet in the event that there's some national security risk. You hit the off switch on the internet. That's not too easy to do, by the way. Mm -hmm. So... An interesting development, and apparently Russia has reportedly spent about 300 million bucks on its sovereign internet plan. And it, apparently it's been moving in that direction. The country has restricted certain access to services in recent years, like VPNs and encrypted messages. But it does make things difficult from a business perspective, and I know you're a big business guy, Will. Because now many of the services and communication that might be required for a free-flowing trade scenario, I guess, once again, China might be the exception here. But there are certain benefits to having that free flow from a business perspective. Hmm. All of a sudden now you can open things up. Whereas if you, if you shut down that border in that sense, uh, you may limit the international economic connectivity. Mm -hmm. You put the wall up. Yes. It's possible. So anyhow, they're going offline to a certain extent. They're going to have their own domestic internet, similar to what China has, but a little bit different. Interesting read, far more comprehensive than this overview if you want to check it out yourself. But you at least learned what splinternet means, and uh, you can thank Willie Do for that. How deep sleep may help the brain clear Alzheimer's toxins. There's a new study. I know we talked about it back when you started wearing a Fitbit once upon a time, whether you get the deep sleep or you don't get the deep sleep with the, with the sleep tracking. Sleep tracking could be big business. It could be a huge thing if people start to take it seriously and read studies like this. The brain waves generated during, during deep sleep appear to trigger a cleaning system in the brain that protects it against Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. They put brains under the fMRI, high-resolution fMRI. If you scroll down, Will, it's really intriguing. You see the brain. You see the cerebrospinal fluid flowing through there, washing the brain clean. I don't know about you, but I want that to happen when I'm sleeping. I want that garbage collection system working the way it should, as you would want it to. During deep sleep, waves of cerebrospinal fluid coincide with temporary decreases in blood flow. Less blood in the brain means more room for the fluid to carry away toxins. 
including those associated with Alzheimer's disease. Are you getting to sleep, Will? I try. Eight hours a day. You're like getting I, eight hours? Yes. But do you feel good in the morning? Yes, I do. Nice. Well, I sleep in the basement, so it's like... Quiet? You know, yeah, it's cold. It's cool. nice. Yeah, right. It's comfy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some disruption to the way sleep is working could potentially be contributing to the decline in brain health. See, here's another thing. Well, the quality of sleep. A lot of people can keep track of the time. They can say, I went to bed at this moment. I woke up at this moment. Th that analysis is easy. I slept a certain number of hours. And generally speaking, that's a great start. But as we learned, we started to track it a little more. Not all sleep is created equal. Mm -hmm. People who have sleep apnea, for example, they're not getting the deep because they keep waking up because of the breathing and they got to get on a CPAP. And you don't know the way you're sleeping, so you got to get that deep stuff. Yes. And, and, and a lot of that comes down to other aspects of your life too, like diet, exercise, uh, potentially stress. Maybe you're looking at the screen too much. And so then it's taking you longer to get to the right stage of sleep. It's all very interesting. Mm -hmm. People start to think about it because you gotta, you're going to be using that brain for a bit. Nah. Well, a little bit at least. Yeah. A couple more weeks or something. Mm. And so you take care of it. I don't know. You got one brain, I think. Yeah. As far as I know. Many stomachs, though. Do you? <laughs> Way to Hold go. Hold a lot more in. Way to go. Yeah, we actually, we got to go. We got to go to that the new barbecue over there. New barbecue? Yeah, we, we all should take a trip over there. Because I, I went and it was, it okay. was a time. All yeah. right. Shout out 3,000 miles. Uh, so anyhow, these types of studies are good because then people start to pay attention, the research improves, and who knows, it's probably, fu probably funded by the sleep tracking devices, probably funded by Fitbit. Yeah. So then everyone gets scared and goes by the Fitbit and sees how the deep sleep is doing. Mm. You see how that goes? Well, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? That's business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get paid $3,000 by being deliberately infected with the flu. You going? You going? You down for that? Well, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. You could get paid three thousand three hundred and ten dollars if you're willing to have yourself deliberately infected with the flu. Researchers want to see how pre-existing antibodies impact a patient's flu symptoms after exposure to the virus. This clinical trial is looking for healthy adults aged eighteen to forty-nine. I'm a prime candidate. Yeah, you're right there. You're right where you need to be. Uh, what's it going to cost? Are you going to do it? $3,310. You get the flu. I would have to say no. Hang on one second before you say that. Volunteers will be given a nasal spray with a strain of seasonal influenza. The virus was developed by scientists and NIH says it's, it reliably produces mild to moderate flu in most recipients. Go how, ahead. how long will I be sick for? I, like I, it's just a regular flu kind of thing? I would say a week. Hmm. I would say a week. and but, but they're saying, look, we're not hitting you with the heavy. We're not going to try to kill you here. They're saying mild to moderate flu. $3,310. Hmm. I don't know. No, you're not doing Probably it. Probably not. I got to no. take care of this. Yeah, good for you, man. I don't I don't want it either. No, I don't want it either, but that's they they're looking for 400 people. You Kirk? can't do it. You can't do it if you're pregnant. Well, you want to know if Kirk will do it. Yeah. What about No, he's pregnant. He can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> got one along the way. You do it, Kirk? I do it. Really? Oh, well, you can handle a flu. Well done. Good for you. Uh, yeah, so they have to give it to 400 people. Five volunteers have already been given the first doses. So there's some people, are they're signing right up. They don't mind. Of course, I guess you got to go to the University of Maryland. <laughs> I guess you got to do that <laughs> first, right? Uh, uh, Cincinnati, here's your choices. Okay. University of Maryland in Baltimore, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, Duke University, St. Louis University. That's your options. What's the deal? You got to stay there? Do you have to stay there? Or can you be monitored from home? Can you get the flu and bounce? 
<laughs> yeah. That's so odd, isn't it? To show up to a medical facility to get the flu. Oh, seven days. Like seven days. You got to stay. They got to monitor you, man. Uh, and then you'll be tracked for an additional additional 90 days after receiving the virus. I don't know. Let's ask the people in the comments. You want the flu for three Gs? Yes or no? What a time to be alive. Pay, they pay you to get the flu. You're not sleeping enough anyway to begin with. So your brain's already messed up. Now you got the flu. <laughs> Well, Fitbit, could, Google buys Fitbit to catch the data, post-flu sleep data. So you can spend the money on AirPods Pro. Yeah, <laughs> and you can pay off your iPhone over the next 12 years. Yes. So that's 2019 in a nutshell. It's another episode of Lou later. And Will, what do you want to say to the people out there? Uh, have a good weekend. <laughs>